हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय प्लेलिस्ट ऑफ फार्माकोलॉजी विच वी आर डूइंग फ्रॉम मिनी कैटजेंग चैप्टर 16 आज स्टार्ट कर रहे हैं और इसमें हम बेसिकली काफी सारे ऑटिकॉइड्स के डिस्कशन करेंगे व्हिच आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कंपाउंड्स इन योर बॉडी एंड दीज आर यू नो एंडोजिनस मॉलिक्यूल्स वी प्रोड्यूस देम इन द बॉडी एंड दे प्रोड्यूस सुपर इंपॉर्टेंट फंक्शंस और फिर इनके इनहिबिटर्स वगैरह भी डिस्कस करेंगे इन कंपाउंड्स में एज यू कैन सी इन द नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर हिस्टामिन मौजूद है सिरोटोनिन एरगोट एल्केलॉइड्स एंड वी विल देन आल्सो टॉक अबाउट नॉट ओनली द बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ हिस्टामिन के हाउ डज हिस्टामिन वर्क बट वी विल आल्सो टॉक अबाउट हाउ इज हिस्टामिन ब्लॉक्ड इन द बॉडी बिकॉज ऑब्वियसली दिस इज फार्माकोलॉजी प्लेलिस्ट सो वी विल टॉक अबाउट how serotonin is blocked so serotonin blockers histamine blockers and drugs which we use in obesity so going to be very interesting chapter will be distributed in i think four or five videos today we will uh, start talking about histamine histamine ke basic concepts aaj discuss karenge next video mein fir histamine blockers ki baat karunga so let's talk about uh, autoquoids which are endogenous molecules that do not fall into traditional autonomic groups so ऑटोमिक नर्वस सिस्टम में सिंपथारिक पैरासिपथारिक जो ट्रेडिशनल क्लासिफिकेशन है ये उसमें फॉल नहीं करते बट दे आर प्रोड्यूस एंडोजीनियसली दे आर प्रोड्यूस विद इन द बॉडी दे डू नॉट एक्ट ऑन कोलिनो रिसेप्टर्स और एड्रीनो रिसेप्टर एंड दिस इज वाई दे आर नॉट क्लासिफाइड इज आई दर पैरासिपथारिक और सिंपथारिक सो दीज आर एंडोजीनियसली प्रोड्यूस मॉलिक्यूल्स बट दे डू नॉट यूटिलाइज फॉर दियर एक्शन सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू हैव हिस्टमीन सो इट डज नॉट यूटिलाइज आई दर पैरासिपथारिक रिसेप्टर और सिंपथारिक रिसेप्टर सो इट्स नॉट गोइंग टू यूज कोलिनो रिसेप्टर और एड्रीनो रिसेप्टर्स but they have very powerful pharmacologic effects on smooth muscles and other tissues histamine and serotonin which is also called 5-HT or 5-hydroxytryptamine they are the most important amine or acquires made up of amino acids the drugs used in obesity do not have significant smooth muscle effect but they have properties in common with histamine and serotonin so they are also included in this group then the last category is the ergot alkaloids which are a very heterogeneous group of drugs and they interact with serotonin receptor dopamine receptor and alpha so that's a very separate category of uh, molecules which are basically uh, you know interacting through serotonin receptor dopa receptors and alpha receptors they are included in this chapter they are not autoquoids but they are included in the chapter because of their effects on the serotonin receptor and serotonin is one of the um, known autoquoids right so if you look at this uh, classification system we will be talking in this chapter about histamine blockers because histamine is one of the autoquoid serotonin receptor agonist and antagonist uh, obviously those which work to uh, activate the serotonin receptor the agonist and which block the serotonin receptor which means the antagonist okay then we will also talk about drugs which are used in obesity and uh, ergot alkaloids very very important chapter because i mean you see some of the drugs uh, for example histamine blockers h1 blockers and h2 blockers they are routinely used in very common clinical stuff okay similarly serotonin agonist as well as antagonist super important so i would say this is going to be uh, a very very important chapter Uh, will be divided as i said in four to five videos will be a, a long series but we need to crack down the concepts okay uh, so first thing that we have to discuss today is going to be the concepts associated with histamine um once i am through the chapter then i'll come back to this chart and then we'll discuss these terms because by that time you will have a very good idea of what the terms we are talking about okay so let's begin our discussion for histamine histamine is synthesized from amino acid and which amino acid histidine and it is stored in high concentrations in vesicles in the mast cells all important information histamine is uh, uh, made up of amino acid histidine mast cells mein iske stores hain aur kaun se cells mein inke stores hain enterochromaffin cells jo ki git mein maujood hain neurons mein and few other cell types so these are the cellular locations for histamine histamine is metabolized by uh, the enzyme uh, system which is known as monoamine oxidase isko hum kehte hain monoamine oxidase mao very important abhi thodi der mein iska zikr bhi hum karenge detail mein and the other enzyme which you have to remember is diamine oxidase so these two enzyme systems are important in the metabolism of histamine excess production of histamine in the body can be detected by measurement of major metabolite which is the i a a a metazol acetic acid so this is one of the metabolite of histamine metabolism and if its levels are high that indicates that we have a lot of histamine in the body being produced 
because it is released from mast cells in response to IgE mediated. Uh, IgE का मतलब है या parasitic infection है या allergic infection है. Uh, infection तो नहीं allergic reaction is the better word. This autoquite plays a pathophysiological role in seasonal rhinitis, which is also called the hay fever, जो कि बहुत common है uh, in various parts of the world. Urticaria, angioneurotic edema. These are all allergic conditions. Whenever there is allergy, you know that we always हमारे जहनों में क्या बात आती है IgE, mast cells and histamine. Okay. Now histamine also plays a physiological role in control of acid secretion in the stomach and as a neurotransmitter. So histamine is a beautiful thing. Fish that has been stored improperly generates high concentration of histamine. That's an important point. Consumption of such fish may produce severe histamine toxicity. Which is also known as scombroid poisoning. Yani, agar isle kya thoda fresh cheese khao, rakhi hui uh, prani machli hai, aur wo bhi khas taur pe inappropriately stored. Yani ke uski refrigeration thik nahi hui, usko hygienic tarike se safe nahi kya gaya. Then that is going to have effects because it will produce a lot of histamine. To ab ye jo fish aap khayenge, isme bahut sara histamine hai and that will induce allergic reactions in your body. Okay. Now receptors uh, actually पुराने जमाने में लोग ये कहते भी थे कि रखी हुई मछली बहुत ज़्यादा नहीं खाओ उससे फिर ये कि स्किन पर रैशेज वगैरह हो जाते हैं सो दैट द कॉज वी हैव मोर हिस्टमीन इफ द फिश इज नॉट प्रॉपरली रेफ्रिजरेटेड प्रॉपरली स्टोर्ड अच्छा अब ऑब्वियसली दिस इज अ प्रोटीन मॉलिक्यूल जो किसी सेल पे जाके एक्ट करेगा एंड वेन एवर अ प्रोटीन मॉलिक्यूल हैज टू एक्ट ऑन अ सेल देयर डेफिनेटली विल बी सम सर्टेन रिसेप्टर्स तो हिस्टामिन के जो रिसेप्टर्स हैं टू रिसेप्टर्स फॉर हिस्टामिन विच आर कॉल्ड एच वन एंड एच टू टू मेक योर लाइफ ईजी एच फॉर हिस्टामिन दे मीडिएट मोस्ट ऑफ द पेरिफेरल एक्शन ऑफ हिस्टामिन देर आर फ्यू अदर्स विच हैव बिन रिपोर्ट सच एज एच थ्री एंड एच फोर but the primary ones which you have to remember are h1 and h2 the triple response a classic demonstration of histamine effect on the skin is mediated by h1 and h2 this response involve a small red spot at the center of the intradermal junction of histamine surrounded by the edema uh, wheel so that is the टिपिकल टिपिकल हिस्टमिन रिएक्शन ऐसे एक पूरा व्हील सा बन जाता है रेडिश तो इससे आपको आइडिया होता है कि ओ माई गॉड हिस्टमिन इज वर्किंग बिग टाइम हेयर ओके सो रिमेंबर दीज आर द टू मेन रिसेप्टर्स विच यू हैव टू रिमेंबर ये याद नहीं तो फंस जाएंगे नाउ एच वन रिसेप्टर्स अब रिसेप्टर्स की ऑब्वियसली आपको डिटेल्स पता होनी चाहिए दे आर जी प्रोटीन कपल रिसेप्टर इन जी क्यू एंड इज इम्पॉर्टेंट इन स्मूथ मजल इफेक्ट स्पेशली दोज मीडिएटेड बाई द आई जी ई रिस्पॉन्स अच्छा फिर आपको पता है कि जो जी प्रोटीन कपल्ड रिसेप्टर्स हैं दे हैव सेकंड मैसेंजर सिस्टम एसोसिएटेड विद दैम सो हिस्टामिन वर्क्स वाई आर दी इनोसिडॉल ट्राइफॉस्पेट एंड डायसाइल ग्लिसरॉल सेकंड मैसेंजर्स टिपिकल रिस्पॉन्स इंक्लूड द पेन एंड इचिंग इन द स्किन ब्रॉन्क्यो कंस्ट्रक्शन सी दिस इज गोइंग टू गिव यू हार्ट टाइम इन रेस्परेशन एंड वेजोडाइलेशन सो इट कैन लीड टू हाईपोटेंसिव emergencies as well the later caused by histamine evoke release of nitric oxide so blood vessels dilate okay blood pressure goes down capillary endothelial cells in addition to releasing nitric oxide uh, also release other vasodilating substances and this leads to edema so more uh, leakage out of the blood vessels these effects uh, happens in allergic reactions and when the uh, you know mast cells are in increased number mastocytosis in any allergic response so h1 receptor important points gq coupled ip3 diacylglycerol these are all the effects if we talk about h2 receptors they are g stimulatory coupled receptors which mediate gastric acid secretion so ye jo um, allergic response hai skin mein uh, bronchi mein blood vessels par edema this is all caused by h1 h2 is more associated with the uh, gastric acid secretion it also has a cardiac stimulant effect and there is a third action to reduce histamine release from the mast cells which is the negative feedback so that's a mast cell releasing uh, histamine why h2 receptor it says oh bhai mast cell slow ja so negative feedback and they are mediated by cyclic amp second messenger system एच uh, मैंने आपको बताया और एच फोर रिसेप्टर भी रिपोर्टेड हैं एच थ्री रिसेप्टर वर्क वाई जी आई जी इनिबिट्री एंड दिस इज ऑल्सो फॉर एच फोर दे बोथ वर्क वाई जी आई कपल्ड प्रोटीन सिस्टम 
and SK effects appear to be involved mainly in the uh, you know presynaptic modulation of histaminergic neurotransmitters, basically in the CNS. Food intake and body weight increases H3 receptor knockout animal DNA experimental studies. I told you this is not uh, super established. Isiliye in ke baare exam itna sawal bhi nahi hote, but H1 and H2 main edema wala jo cheez hai of the histamine ka action is by H1 and gastric acid secretion H2. ठीक है जी तो अल्सर के पेशेंट में आप H2 ब्लॉकर देंगे H1 ब्लॉकर क्या काम करेगा क्लिनिकल यूज इज इफ यू टॉक अबाउट हिस्टामिन हैज नो थेरापोटिक एप्लीकेशन सो आप पेशेंट को हिस्टामिन नहीं दे रहे होते हैं फॉर एनी सॉर्ट ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट यू रादर गिव पेशेंट्स ब्लॉकर्स सो फॉर एग्जांपल अगर अल्सर का पेशेंट है देयर इज अ लॉट ऑफ गैस्ट्रिक एसिड सिक्रीशन यू नाउ नीड टू ब्लॉक एच2 सो दैट्स हाउ यू यूज द ब्लॉकर्स ओके हिस्टामिन इटसेल्फ हैज नो थेरापोटिक एप्लीकेशन बट ड्रग्स दैट ब्लॉक इट्स इफेक्ट्स एट एच1 एंड एच2 रिसेप्टर आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्लिनिकली मैंने आपको बता दिया दे आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट और फिर एच3 एच4 के चूंकि फंक्शंस भी एस्टैब्लिश नहीं है तो इनके कोई नॉन एंटी भी नहीं है ओके सो दैट्स ऑल अबाउट हिस्टमीन की बेसिक बेसिक चीजें अब हमें ऑब्वियसली बात करनी है अबाउट दिस्ट ऑफ हिस्टमीन सो लेट्स स्टार्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट एच वन इंटेगनिस्ट सो अब आपको पता है कि एच वन कहाँ काम करता है इट वर्क एट डिफरेंट लेवल्स ब्रॉको कंस्ट्रक्शन कराएगा वेजोडाइलेशन कराएगा ऑल दीज थिंग्स सो अ वाइड वराइटी ऑफ एंटी हिस्टेमिनिक एच वन ब्लॉकर आर अवेलेबल फ्रॉम सेवरल डिफरेंट केमिकल फैमिलीज टू मेजर सब ग्रुप्स जो आपको याद रखने हैं वो भी हम डिस्कस करते हैं द ओल्डर मेम्बर ऑफ द फर्स्ट जनरेशन एजेंट्स आर एग्जाम्पलीफाइड बाई डाइफ इन हाइड्रोमीन वेरी कॉमनली यूज ड्रग दे आर हाईली सिडेरिंग एजेंट्स नींद आती है इसको यूज करके विद सिग्निफिकेंट ऑटोनॉमिक रिसेप्टर ब्लॉकिंग इफेक्ट एज वेल एंड देन देर इज अ न्यूअर सब ग्रुप इवन ऑफ द फर्स्ट जनरेशन बट दैट्स अव वन इसका बेनिफिट यह है कि इसमें नींद कम आती है सो दीज आर लेस डेरेव और इनके अदर ऑटोनॉमिक इफेक्ट्स भी कम है ठीक है और फिर जो प्रोटोटाइप ड्रग्स हैं इसमें क्लोर फिनारमीन एंड साइक्लेजिन द सेकेंड सो ये फर्स्ट जनरेशन की बात हो गई जो पहले ड्रग्स बनी थी इनमें एक ग्रुप वो हो गया जैसे नींद बहुत ज्यादा आती है फिर एक ग्रुप वो हो गया विच आर लेस डेरेव देन देर आर सेकेंड जनरेशन ड्रग्स विच ब्लॉक एच वन रिसेप्टर्स एंड दे इंक्लूड सेटेरिजीन फेक्सोफेनिडीन एंड लोराथेडेन दे आर लेस लिपिड सॉलिबल देन द फर्स्ट जनरेशन ड्रग और दे हैव जनरली रिड्यूस डेरिंग सो I mean, when I used to study medicine and uh, ये सारी drugs develop हो रही थी obviously उस वक्त तो they were in the market और इनका benefit सबसे ज़्यादा ये था कि uh, आप students को दे सकते हैं ये drugs uh, किसी को अगर allergy है और उनको school में नींद नहीं आएगी college में नींद नहीं आएगी so they are super duper important drugs because of one single effect कि इनमें sedation कम है ठीक है और autonomic effects भी कम है all H1 blockers are active by oral routes several are promoted for topical uses uh, लेकिन orally बहुत ज़्यादा इनका use होता है most are metabolized extensively in the liver and half life of h1 blockers vary from 4 to 12 second generation have to yeah aap yaad rakh le to achhi baat hai how do they work obviously they are h1 blockers so h1 blockers are competitively uh, you know antagonizing the effects of the pharmacologic effects of uh, uh, you know histamine at h1 receptor they're going to block the interaction of histamine at h1 receptor they are more effective if given before histamine release occurs so as soon as you give after the allergic response uh, they, they're pretty useful they're pretty effective because their structure closely resemble that of muscarinic blockers alpha adrenoreceptor blockers many of the first generation h1 blockers also have those effects so they kind of have muscarinic effects but jaise maine aapko bataya ki second generation ki jo drugs hain they do not have much of the autonomic effects okay a few also blockers are not not important as noted most older first generation agents are sedating neend aayegi and some not all first generation drugs have anti motion sickness effects as well so they are sometimes used uh, in motion sickness uh, uh, treatment as well many h1 blockers are potent local anesthetics so they have local anesthetic effect h1 blocking drugs have negligible effects on h2 receptor so they are pretty selective they are only going to block the h1 thing they are not going to affect the gastric acid secretion okay now if you talk about the clinical uses obviously uh, allergy mein ye use hote hain ab tak aapko baat samajh mein aa gayi hai diphenhydramine dimethyldehyde cyclazine meclizine and promethazine are used as anti motion sickness drugs as well adverse effects of h1 blockers are sometimes exploited therapeutically that is in the use as hypnotics because neend bhi aa rahi hai na to ye wali cheez hai but anyway it's pretty uh, you know straight forward stuff hai h1 blockers hain h1 ka action block karenge aur uh, inme first generation second generation naam pata hone chahiye differences pata hone chahiye clinical use pata hona chahiye which is allergy 
اچھا جی ٹاکسیسٹی کے حوالے سے کامنٹ سیڈیشن از ون آف دا کامن سائڈ افیکٹ وچ یو نیڈ ٹو ریمبر اور پھر سی این ایس میں افیکٹس ہیں ادر آٹونومک ریسیپٹر سچ ایز الفا ایڈرینو ریسیپٹر بلاکیج کین ہیپن ایون مسکورینک ریسیپٹر بلاکیج کین ہیپن اوکے انٹریکشن وائز اگر ہم بات کریں سو انٹریکشن اکر بٹوین اولڈ جنریشن اینٹی ہسٹامینس اینڈ ادر ڈرگس وتھ سیڈیٹیو افیکٹ سچ ایز دی ول انٹریکٹ وتھ بینزوز اینڈ الکوہل امپورٹنٹ اوکے ڈرگس دیٹ انہیبٹ دی ہیپاٹک میٹابولزم مے ریزلٹ ان ڈینجرسلی ہائی لیولز اف دیز ڈرگس بیکاز لیور از گوئنگ ٹو میٹابولائز دی اینٹی ہسٹامین اگر کوئی لیور میں ایشو ہے یا اینی ڈرگ وچ از گوئنگ ٹو افیکٹ لیور مشینری تو پھر ہسٹامین کے لیول ہائی بیکاز اس کی میٹابولزم کم فار ایگزامپل ایزول اینٹی فنگلز اینڈ ادر سپ 3 4 اے انہیبٹرز دے ول انکریز دی لیول اف ہسٹامین ڈرگس اینٹی ہسٹامین ڈرگس اوکے سو آل امپورٹنٹ کنسیڈریشنز بٹ ایزی ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ So now we are left with the other type of uh, histamine blocker, which is the H2 blocker. Or H2 blocker may, um, there are various drugs, char to aapko definitely pata honi chahiye, cymatidine, ranitidine, femotidine, nizatidine. They differ only in having fewer adverse effects than cymatidine. So they, they, these ones are better and cymatidine senko compare kar rahe, initial drug. These drugs do not resemble H1 blocker structurally and they do not uh, block H1 receptor as well. Inki half-lives likhi hai. How do they work? They obviously block H2 receptor and H2 receptor was present in gastric secretion stuff okay h2 antagonist produces a surmountable pharmacologic blockade of h2 receptor they are relatively selective and have no effect on h1 receptor so which is good h1 h2 pe kaam nahi karta h2 h1 pe kaam nahi karta clinically you use them i mean imagine ulcer ulcer ka jo patient hai peptic acid disease they secrete a lot of hcl they secrete a lot of gastric acids and all these things that are there you know and uh, they have damaging effects of those gastric acids now you need to block it and in order to block it you know that there is h2 receptor working here so uh, histamine aata hai aur acid secretion ko badhata hai to agar aap h2 receptor ko block kar denge to as uh, you know gastric acid secretion will be handled and this is how it works so in acid peptic diseases particularly in duodenal ulcer these drugs are useful acute ulcer is usually treated with two or more doses per day whereas recurrence of duodenal ulcers can often be prevented in a single bedtime dose H2 blockers are also effective in accelerating healing, so they're good for ulcer patients. That is the overall story. In Zollinger-Ellison syndrome, which is associated with gastrinoma and characterized by acid hypersecretion, severe recurrent peptic ulceration happen. These drugs are helpful even in a gastrinoma situation. So there is a gastrinoma secreting a lot of gastrin, a lot of acid, but H2 blockers help. Okay, obviously they are used with uh, a lot of other drugs such as uh, PPIs and some other drugs. Similarly, H2 blockers have been used in uh, GERD, which is a gastroesophageal reflux disease, hai, but uh, Um, I mean, they're not as effective as PPIs in GERD. In the major use peptic, acid peptic disease may he have. Okay. Now, cymatidine is a potent inhibitor of hepatic drug metabol- metabolizing enzymes and may also reduce hepatic blood flow. So, damage to the liver. Cymatidine also has significant anti-androgen effects. Anti-androgen effects. Uh, important point is this. So, changes in the body structure because they are interfering with androgens. Renitidine has a weaker inhibitory effect on hepatic drug metabolism. Neither it nor the other H2 blockers appear to have any endocrine effect. So what do you think? Is it not a better drug as compared to the cymatidine? So that's why new drugs are developed. Okay. So that's our discussion about histamines. In the next video, we will start talking about serotonin. Take care of yourself till then. I'll see you in the next video very soon.